this morning we'll be coming from Luke chapter 15 verses 8 through 10 we'll be talking about searching for our salvation remember we got to sweep we got to have that light but we need to sweep to make sure we get all the dust out the way so we can find that penny that we're looking for
stepping. Number seven, be stepping. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. We sing the first and last step. Let's all sing. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah.
uh, that's a principal and and uh, he has his doctor degree and preaching the gospel and he has two young men, uh, his sons over here and his wife and his mom. Y'all wave your hand. All right, that's the, that's the fish man. That's his wife over here, his lovely mother. All right, and y'all know he has a wonderful daddy, right? Y'all know that, right? Right. Well, right. <laughs> So uh, with that being said, we want to uh, welcome uh, Brother Donnell Finch um, uh, to the East Side Church of Christ. We, we love him dearly, and we're just uh, thankful that he is a member of the Church of Christ. And Brother Mike, you want to bring him up at this time. The next voice you hear after Brother Kennedy will be Brother Donnell Finch from the Rule Hill Church of Christ. Get up the Lord, arise.
be here. Uh, I get the introduction all the time, but this is home. This is family. And so I don't need an introduction. I know everyone in here. Uh, I'm the same old young man that you know from way back when. Uh, I'm just married. I got some bags under my, 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 you know, my eyes and that kind of thing. But that's all right. Before we get started, uh, just great to be here. Uh, just a blessing to, to be in the midst of the Lord and, uh, and amongst good people. Y'all look so good. You smell good. <laughs> and God is good. And, 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 and hats off to the leadership here. Brother Ford Floyd Hughes, he called me and uh, he asked, what, Are you dodging me, brother? I said, No, man. No. Why would I do that? You know, but he called and uh, he said, Man, you got an hour. I got quiet. Got quiet. You know, I said, I'm going to be here an hour that long. But but uh, he, he invited me over again, and I said, hey, I can't say no to home. I cannot say no to home. I uh, love my wonderful boys, 15 and 13. Mm-hmm. Y'all pray for them. Right? Because it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting, um, and I appreciate that. It's kind of interesting because I, I get upset every time I go to the refrigerator. I get upset. I get upset. I open it. I'm like, you make me a sandwich, and there's no meats. And the next day, there's no bread. And Kool-Aid is drunk, and uh, everything is gone. And, they, and I have to go to the store. They eat everything. They eat everything. They just consume it, and they don't gain any weight. I don't get it. I don't understand how they don't gain any weight. So I look at a loaf of bread, and I gain 10 pounds. So I don't, you know, that's cool. I wish I could bottle that and just sell it somewhere. Unfortunately, I cannot. But uh, just love them, my wife, my wife, 16 years. 16 years, a decade and a half of one person. Yeah. Oh, well, no, I'm just kidding. But it was just been great. It's been great. It's been tremendous. And I uh, love my dad. I know him and my mom. She's just awesome as well, too. So so it's good to see everybody. Sister Carl, Sister Joseph, man, Sister Kennedy, and man, Brother Drew over here on the side. Man, this is awesome. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. And I, and I look at the sun coming in. I, I felt like I was living in Gotham City for a while because it was just clouds everywhere and it's all this rain and flooding, but it's good to, uh, to, to have the sunlight. And, and today, for me, it's sad. It's a sad day because uh, we're on spring break. I go back to work tomorrow. I go back to work. And, and y'all pray for me because sometimes I just want to strangle a kid. You know? <laughs> take them. But I love my license and my job and the paycheck I get, so I better hang on to that and not hang on to the kids. So, so y'all pray for me. We have uh, uh, our juveniles. Our juveniles, they're, 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 they're hurting. They're really hurting. If you notice, I don't know some of you been looking at the news, and I, I don't know if you mind, I like coming down and talking to people, man. I don't like staying up alone. But, uh, you know, in, in Nashville, for the youth and the crime is still, still in cars and, and doing these kinds of things. And, and I don't know if you recall to your memory the one where those, those teens, those about five of them, four yeah. five of them, yeah. they shot and killed yeah. that, the, uh, the, the musician that right. was here and lost his life tragically. Uh, but unfortunately, those kids will lose their lives as well because they'll be behind yeah. bars. The oldest one that was 16 years old, right. I actually expelled him from school. Oh, and, and so his you know, beautiful mom, and she was super supportive. Uh, but this young man, she talked to him. I remember having many conversations in my office in the hallways, just trying to get him to do right. But unfortunately, yeah. he made a decision uh, that, that's going to impact him for the rest of his life. Yeah. Uh, but, but the youth, they, they're, they're hurting. They're hurting, they're hurting, they're hurting. They need us. They need good Christian people in their lives. Uh, in order to make things the way they need to be. Uh, you know what, not only are you hurting, we are hurting as adults, yeah. right? We are hurting as adults. Uh, Brother Kennedy mentioned it earlier, that, 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 that massacre that happened in New Zealand. Yeah. You know, these people went to their place of worship thinking that, hey, you know, right, I'm gonna right. wake up, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do, and then somebody comes in, and they, and they intentionally, I mean, they streamed it online, killing people, yeah. killing people, and, our, uh, our country is just torn with all right. kind of divisiveness, and, 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 and you know, I won't get into all the political atmosphere of it because I don't want you to run me out, but well, you, you know, there's a lot that's going on, uh, you know, with, with, with nationality and supremacy and all these kinds of things. And, and, uh, and you know what? Every time I go to the mailbox, there's always somebody building there. And it doesn't upset you. It doesn't upset you. You go in, you're hoping to. To get something positive, maybe an ESPN magazine or uh, you know something very you know worthwhile, and you get in there, that's Verizon and Comcast and and, and Piedmont and Nashville Electric and Metro.
actual water and, and somebody's credit card and man, that just make you want to just say, forget it. But we gotta keep moving. We have to keep moving. I mean the cars we drive in and, and the gas and the, the mechanics right. and all that stuff that has to go. There's a lot going on. Yes, Even my jobs. You know, that's that somebody just waiting, man. They sitting there waiting, ready to push your butt. Yeah. Wait, on Monday morning, right there at the coffee machine, at the Keurig, you may somebody may have a Keurig, you know, right there, and just sitting there ready to yeah. disappoint you, ready to upset you. The devil is busy. Yes, sir. The devil is busy. Uh, and I want to talk to you uh, t uh, today, or somewhere this morning, something uh, that, that God's really been working with me on uh, after I received the phone call that I think will be very advantageous to you. Uh, it really blessed my life. And God, God is in the blessing business. Yes, Amen. You know, the devil give curses, God give blessings. Amen. And, and, and so we, we want to stay in the blessing business. And, and, and we're going to look at Luke 15, and then we'll drop over to John 14. But if you turn your Bibles to Luke 15, and as you turn, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. Uh, actively searching for salvation. Actively searching for salvation. You know, I'm talking to uh, all these beautiful Christians in here. Okay. You know, you're magnificent, and again, you know, you look good. From the older, you look great, man. And, and, and y'all look outstanding. You look magnificent. Yes, sir. Singing well, but it's your soul well. Oh, it's your soul well. A lot of us, when we read these parables, these these heavenly stories with an earthly meaning, when we read these parables, at the time we don't really put the shoe on. We always point the finger at the other person. But well, are we really saved? Are we really saved? Are we in a lost condition right now? Now, some of you I know, you don't have to fight this. Right. So I fight it every morning. Every morning I get up at 4.30. Right. I get up at 4.30. I know, some of you don't even know what 4.30 looks like, right? Yeah. But I get up at 4.30, and I go to Gold's Gym. Okay. And I run for 30 minutes, and it's okay. been three miles. Right. And, then I, and then I lift weights, and then I go home, take a shower, and I'm ready for those kids. See, yeah. see, usually the kids are preparing for the adults. I'm ready for them. I'm coming in. I'm ready. They're like, man, bitch, what's going on? Why are you so excited? I said, because, man, God is good. And it's giving me the opportunity to share God's message to them. Are you ready? Oh, no. Are you ready? Are you, do, you know, the devil, he likes for us to be comfortable. Yeah. He wants us, and when we get comfortable, we feel like we, we're in a, a position of, of being safe. All right. But are we ready? Oh, are we no. really being safe? Because the devil's good at going up facades. Yes, He's right. really good at thinking that everything's good. But you know what John says, right? In, in John 10, 10, it says the thief. Okay. The thief. Now, now a thief doesn't come announced, right? right? Hey, I'm coming to break into your house right. at 8 o'clock p.m. on March the 31st. Be ready, okay? The thief doesn't do that, right? A thief is, comes unintentionally, okay? So so you don't suspect a thief to come. So a thief comes not, not to steal, not only to steal, but to what? Kill and destroy. The devil wants to murder you. Yes, sir. The devil wants your soul. Yes, sir. That man I was, the young man I was talking about, the devil's down right now. Yes, sir. It's yes, not sir. too late. It's not too late. Right, but right now, he's in the, cl the clutch right. of the devil. You know what's interesting? All right. What's really interesting is that when they, when they did the, the pre-hearing and, and those young people were there, yeah. they were sitting there laughing and playing with each other and the judge gave them and y'all need to be quiet. Not understanding that their lives are hanging in the yeah. balance. And then, and then they kept messing around to the point the bailiff had to take them out of the courtroom. Wow. The devil's got them. The devil's got them. How about us as adults? He's got us too. Yes, sir. Does he not? Yes, sir. We know sometimes just because we, we give here and there, yes, we come to church on Sunday and Wednesday, I fulfill the quote, yes, the Christian sir. quote. Come on, check, man. check, checklist yes, Christians. Sir. Check, check, check. That's yes, it. I got, oh, I did it. I'm good. Now yes, go sir. and watch Tennessee go against Auburn. I did my job for today. Yes, sir. But you know that's more than Christianity than just checking off a list. All right. Just checking off the list. Let's, let's look a little bit at this parable. Because this has a message. A lot of times when we look at this parable, we think of God finding the lost, which is excellent. But how about us looking for God? All right. right. How about us looking for God? Because we need to start searching. And, we, and, and the first thing that this this this, this lady, this woman that's, that's talked about here in this parable, she recognized the first thing, she recognized something was lost. 
right. she recognized something was lost. First, we need to do, if we don't recognize that we're lost, right. then we're going right. to stay lost. Right. That's the same thing as when we go to the doctor, and the doctor says, look, you need to lose this amount of weight. If you don't, you ain't going to stay ahead of the diabetes that runs in your family. Yes, so you have to do some things. You have to run after it. So in this text, if you look at it, if you look at it, it says uh, in, in the, first, the first verse, it says in verse 8, it says, or suppose mm -hmm. a woman has 10 silver coins mm -hmm. and loses one. Okay. okay, she loses one. Now, possibly this coin refers to one that will be held for several others on a silver chain worn around the head or, or as a mark of a married woman. Okay. So it was Jewish custom for them to wear these types of jewelry and even money around their neck. Right. Now, she loses one. She loses one. So let me put this in context for us because we're thinking, oh, a silver dollar, okay, that's nothing. Yeah. But, but let's, let's go to 2019 for, for a minute and, and say you, you lose $1 out of 100. Okay, okay that's, a, that's a dollar. You can have that. I, I can get away with that. Right, right. But, but say if, if, if you, you made $1,000. Okay. You made $1,000 after Uncle Sam took everything else that, they, that was there, right? Uh, Uncle Sam will take from y'all's check. Uncle Sam will take from mine now. So, so, so Uncle Sam exactly, takes, exactly. you get a thousand, right. it's in your bank account, but, but you lose a hundred. Yeah. You lose a hundred. That's a tenth, right? Yeah. One tenth. Now, I'm telling you now, you can have a dollar, but you're not about to get my hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Because I worked very hard for a hundred dollars. So, so, so think about this for instance. Think, think about this. So, we, we have this lady who lost a whole Right. She recognized it, it had a lot of sentimental value, right. okay, because her husband might have given it to her. It might have been something that over time been passed down to her, but whatever it is, we understand by Jewish custom, it was something that, that was very valuable, yeah. right? So, back to us. If I lose a hundred dollars, okay. If I lose a hundred dollars, okay. Okay. Let's see here. This is what we got here. I don't think I got a hundred. Uh, you know, remember those bills I was telling you about? I had to pay them. So that's not uh, okay. But but if I have, okay, it's twenty dollars. Okay. So it's twenty dollars. Well, the huge, you can't have it. Okay. So I got twenty dollars here. And, and to, to me, twenty dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, I don't care what you say. Twenty dollars is a lot of money. All right. That's 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 one fifth of a hundred dollars, okay? So so money's very valuable. Now I'm telling you, if, if I were to lose this, I'm gonna tell you all of a sudden, life is gonna stop. Okay, I don't care if I need to go pick up somebody, my kid would just be hanging at the school for a little long, come and find my twenty dollars. Okay, now, hey, what am I gonna do? What if I process I'm gonna go through this whole thing? I mean, you all of a sudden you ever lost something before that you really value? Yeah. It seems like all of a sudden you get stronger, right? Because you lift up couches with yeah. one arm, and, and yeah. then you, you looking over here, you knocking down, you don't care what's going on, I'm going to find that $20. Hey, that's a tank of gas. I'm going to find this $20, right? So you're searching, and you're lifting up couches, you're moving dishes, yeah. you're tearing up stuff. You don't care what's going on. The phone is ringing. I don't care if it's auntie, grandma, or whoever. I'm not answering it because I'm on a mission, right? My mission is to find that what? $20. Right, right. I got to find this $20. And then I keep going, and I keep going, and I'm going to keep searching until finally, okay, all right, let me take a break, and I'm going to come back, right? And then you start thinking about I need to retrace my steps. It's like, okay, what did I do this morning? Okay, I was over here and I made some, I made a bagel and then I came over here and I did this. Then yeah, I went to the yeah. computer. Where is my money? You're going to yeah. keep going because you're, you're not going to be right. Because right. when you get to work, what are you going to be thinking about? That's $20. <laughs> and then you start blaming people, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I bet Joshua took it. And he yeah, probably went to the store and bought something to eat with it. You know, the food that went in my refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, man, my wife, after 16 yeah, years, yeah. that took wow. my $20. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? But the thing is, it's missing in action. Yeah, it's right. missing. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's something of value to it. Right. So right. We, we go back to the text here. We have this lady who, or this one lady, we don't know who she is, she's unidentified, mm -hmm. but she's lost a tenth of her, her wealth, okay? So she's lost a tenth of her wealth. And then if you look here, and you look a little further down, it says, and, and, and in this other, in the same verse 8, doesn't she light a lamp? Mm -hmm. So look at the process. First she identified that she's lost. Mm -hmm. And then she takes action. Mm -hmm. 
So she lights up a light. Now, I don't have a lamp, but, you, but if you can consider, uh, you know, I got a flashlight here. I took this, my, you know, my sons take all the foods, so I took their flashlight. So, you know, you, you know, you have this flashlight, and everybody can see it, um, and you start to investigate. Yeah. Now, if you look at those times back then, our houses were very small, very small, very dusty, okay? They didn't have the laminate floors that some of them got, you know, some of y'all yeah. yeah. You know, the carpet and all those kinds of things. It was just bare ground, mm -hmm. bare ground. So she starts looking, and they don't have any S. <laughs> they don't have any S, right? So you have to go light up something, yeah. right? So she's looking around, and, 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 and there's a key word in this text that I want you to catch. Not, she's not just looking. Okay, like, like for a dollar, I'm gonna look and then I'm gone, right? Yeah. $20, I'll search, yeah. right? And he uses this word, it starts with a D. What is it, Brother Drew? Diligently. Say it again. Sweet. Diligently. Diligently. She was diligent. This woman stopped what she was doing and she was gonna find that. that, that. Yeah. 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 She was gonna find, so she, she stopped and she began yeah. looking. She's looking around, she's looking around every corner, she's looking around, she's looking up under furniture, she's all over the place. Yeah, all over the place. Look, I want you to put this in your mind. So she's looking all over the place, and then she still doesn't see, right? Now, this is very important. Back in those times, they didn't have air conditioning or anything right, like that. Right. And it was in the Middle Eastern part of, of the world, so you would see the sand and dirt right. that would come into your house. You had to consistently sweep all the time. Okay. If you didn't sweep after so long, what was there is no longer you will lose it. Yeah. You'll lose it. And it's interesting, even as, as us today, as Christians, as, as, as men and women of Christ, a lot of times we get lost in the dust. Yeah. We get yeah. lost in the yeah. dust. All right. When we get into the, the mundane work of life, yeah. when we're doing 40 and 50 hours a week, right. we'll put God on the back burner. Yeah. Right. We, we, right. we think that it's okay to miss this Sunday because God has got my back. Yeah. And, and because God gave us a little grace and they haven't taken our life away, we think we're okay. But in actuality, you know better than that. God is saying, you need to get the dust off of your life. You need to get the dust off of your life. Because a lot of times, when we walk around, we're just as dusty as we want to be. You know, some of us say ash, but we're dusty as we want to be, right? We are. We are. And it's hard for us to admit that because we think we're living good. We think we have it going on. But in actuality, God is saying, no, you don't. No, you don't. You are in the left. I'm looking. We're looking for you. And we can't find you because you're under the dust. You've been sitting there for so long, after so long. Let, let, think about how long it takes for dust to collect. Mm -hmm. You have to be sitting there and you're one, two, three, cha, cha, cha. All right. So long, so long, so long that you covered up with dust and we can't even find you. All right. Some of us are in that situation. Some of us are in that situation. So she, she, she not only, she didn't, the lamp wasn't good enough. So the next step was she, she goes and she sweeps the house. So I, I brought my broom from home, man. Right. Good, I brought my broom from home, right? right? My wife was like, no, nah, that broom looks raggedy. Go buy a new one. I said, no, nah, we don't use this. <laughs> hey, it's a good broom. Man, it's been used. Okay, so, so she starts to sweep it. And, 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 and you know, some people know how to sweep. Okay. You know, now she was sweeping. She was going across, knocking things down, stirring up dust all over the place because what? She knew something was what? Lost. Yes, sir. How many of us are looking for God? How many of us are looking for God? That's the question I'm going to present yourself. You know, we can get on Instagram and all this other social media. Yes, and we can look for all kinds of things there. And a lot of times what you look for, you will find. Yes, sir. You will find. How many of us are searching pornography? How many of us are getting on those sites? It's so easy this day and time. See, when I was 10 and 12 and all of that, we have all the social media stuff. So you had to get on Showtime and HBO. I'm not telling myself how to get But you had to get on. You had to stay up late. You had to make an effort. You had to make an effort. Now you just got to get on. Your, that's all you got to do now is just, here it is right here. Bam, I'm right there at it. And it's just right there at your fingertips. It's right there at your fingertips. Pornography. How many of us can't put the cigarette out of it? All right, now. Ain't it ridiculous? Man, it's ridiculous. Man, that's, that nicotine is so good. Man, it's so good. It makes you feel yeah. good. And you think because you put $20 in church and you take the Lord's Supper, you have the audacity to call yourself a Christian. Mm. And you're sitting there collecting dust. How dare 
tear us? How dare we continue to 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 uh, to ignore the grace God has given us mm -hmm. to change? Yes, sir. He's right. given us grace and mercy yes, to change, yeah. and we ignore the stop yes, sign. We ignore the caution sign. We ignore the dead end sign, and we continue to do what we want to do. We continue down these roads. So, and I'm saying we now. Hey, I'm not exempt from this. None of us are, right? So he goes on further here, and he says. Okay, she sweeps, she look at the light, and she searches carefully right. until she finds it. The right. end goal is, I'm going to keep searching yes, until right. I find the Lord. Yes, I don't keep searching until I make up, until I reunite myself with God. Until right. I reunite myself, I, I got to keep searching. Right. I got to keep sweeping. I got to keep looking. And in that process, don't let anybody get in your way. Right. You know, people going to tell you, what are you looking for that for? Forget right. that. That is nothing. Man, salvation is everything. Yes. Don't let anybody ever tell you anything different. Right. different. So she goes on. She searches carefully until she right. finds it. And when she finds it, let her yes. 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 this is This is very interesting. Because, you know, I... I was ever seen the commercial. Uh, the fact the it's the vacuum cleaner is it vacuum cleaner a long time ago. And and whenever they they, they would vacuum and then whenever they found it, they would say, Eureka, I found it, I found it. This is the same right here. Look at it. He says it not. And when she finds it, will you find the Lord? Will you find God and you reunite yourself with God? Right? If you are an unbeliever and you have been baptized, will you find God? Look what happens. Right. It says, and, and she calls her, now, this is the thing, I'm not going to just celebrate in my house. I'm going to go call some friends, right? Amen. I'm going to call a couple of folks. Let's get together. Wow, what are we doing? We said, I found the Lord. I found myself. I found salvation. I'm no longer lost. Now I have contact. Remember, the thief is here to, to kill, steal, and what? Destroy so in, in verse 9, he, she said she calls her friends. And now when she calls her friends, she said, neighbors, come on. You know, back in those days, they were real close together. So it wasn't, it wasn't that long for people to come over to each other's house, right? So, so everybody got together. And she said, what did she say? She said, what? Choice. She said, what? Uh, I, hold on, what's that first word? What? I, I, what? But I want to say it loud, man. Say it, say it one more time. Like you mean it. I rejoice. It isn't like I found that 20. Now, if you lost that 20 or that $100, you know, you found it. <laughs> Come on, y'all know some of you, what some of you would do now. Yes, sir. You know, and I can use this morning, for instance, man, just, just a sweet, beautiful lady. Yes, sir. Just beautiful. Man, just, just a, an example to everybody, to the young ladies, right? But, and, and would do anything for you. Man, if she loses $100, she going to change. She's going to change. Sweet. 
I never forget it. I got up, and man, oh, oh, I heard that or something. You said young, you yeah. introduced me, but bad 40, man, you start feeling stuff. And so I'm like, oh man, my knee and all this kind of stuff. And, and, but I had to fight that, right? I had to fight that because that's a goal I'm trying to meet. That's right. That's right. Don't we have to fight that when we have to rejoice? You know, and, and we have to be diligent. We have to be diligent. And yet, and when we look for things and we find it, and, and somebody rejoices, and then we hate on them. And that's, isn't that crazy? Yeah. But we do it, don't we? All right. Because we were stuck down here. And then we need to do some sweeping and finding ourselves. Amen. Right? Amen. So, so look at this. She calls her friends. She said, rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. She has completed her mission. She sought out. She found it. She found it. She found it. She said, Eureka, I found it. Eureka. Amen. And she started rejoicing, right? Amen. Go to go with me to John. Go with me to John. Let us go to the book of John real quick. John 14. And we're going to end with this. We're going to end with this because I, 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 I said an hour. I'm going to give you a break. So on John 14, I'm just kidding. Oh, man, I couldn't do that. Sure. Brother Barstow, fall out the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we are. We, we're in the book here. We're in the book of uh, this $20. Yeah, yeah. 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 If I'm losing, man, I'll tear this church down. Right? Okay, so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, look, this is home. Man. Kids get home. Uh, so, so in, in John, it says this. Verse one. How, um, verse two. My father's house has many what? Mm -hmm. If there was not so, I would not have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. So, look at this. At this time, Jesus is about to give up his life for us. For us. Yeah. Us that continue to do things we shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. We we go and creep out of marriages. We go out and we well, we go get drunk sometimes. The, the other things we do, right? The, the lies that we tell sometimes. And, and man, we we, we try uh, how holy art thou? We out here trying to all kind of stuff. Man. But he still died for you. The apostles couldn't. The disciples couldn't. Right, handle right. It. They've been there for three and a half years under his tutelage, hurting it, growing, right? And then here we are here. And then he has to remind them this. I, and then the King James Version says mansions, but it's not all about the mansion, right? It's about, man, I got enough real estate for all of y'all. I got enough real estate for everybody, right? And so he goes on, Jesus reminded us that God provides. Even after death, if our lifestyle aligns with his word, God will provide those yes, believers sir. in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Jesus clearly states that he is preparing a place for those who walk worthy. With this in mind, you and I need to prioritize. Yeah, right. Get your priorities together. Yeah, right. Okay? Houses, wealth, education, yeah, right. position, yeah, authority. Yeah, right. Here in this life is not a sin. However, you and I often involve, we involve ourselves in work and in school, and we put God and his work on the back burner. All right. God is no longer a priority, but a check off the long list All of things right, to do. Verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, mm -hmm. I will come back and I will take you and you will be with me and where I am. Jesus does not deal with Uber or Lyft. <laughs> he doesn't deal with Uber or Lyft, right? Jesus promised that he is coming back for those that walk what? Worthy. Worthy. You see, if you and I depend on Rideshare or Apple or Google Maps, you and I risk getting dropped off at the wrong location. At the wrong location. You and I were sharing the ride with others that are going in a different direction. All right, all right. You and I risk changing my mind or our minds on where we are going. Isn't it beautiful that Christ is in the back? Isn't it beautiful? This is a joyous occasion that Jesus explained to his disciples. Okay? And he goes on, he says, Jesus understands that personally coming back for those that are faithful in their walk ensures that yes, they sir. will make a heaven, make heaven without any detours, pit stops, lack of direction, and right. emphasize right. his love for those that keep his word. All right, all right. <laughs> Remember, not everyone will get this opportunity. Let me say it again. Not everyone will get this opportunity. Right, right. Not everyone will get this opportunity. This, this opportunity is unique. There are those that will not make this trip. Those that are lost and did not live the lifestyle that God calls us to maintain. Living a blameless lifestyle that can actually happen. I can't live a blameless lifestyle. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. Amen. Forget the excuses. Excuses are signs of failure. Yeah. 
Excuses are signs of failure. You can live a blameless life All right. with God. You can't do it by yourself. And he goes on and he says in, in four, you know the way to the place where I'm going. Here's a reminder that Jesus' disciples know how to get to heaven. But the disciples do not understand what it takes. In John chapter 3, John points out to Nicodemus that faith alone is not enough for salvation. That's right. But baptism is essential. We all know John 3, 16. So God so loved the world. He gave his what? Only begotten son. And we, and, and so, and we, we know this. We, we recite it. That's one of the first scriptures you learn. Amen. Jesus is the way. And so Thomas asked this question, right? He asked this question, Lord, we don't know where we are going. How can we come the way? Yeah. And, it, and, and the way's been right there under him for the past three and a half years. The past three and a half years. Yeah. How long have you known the way? 10 years. Yeah. 15 years. Yeah. 40 years. Yeah. And then you find yourself covered with dust. Yeah. You find yourself not looking, yeah. not, not trying to find. And, and then he goes, and Paul, and Paul warns us, he says, look, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are right. on earth. Colossians, right. Colossians 3 2. And Matthew says, Seek ye first the what? The kingdom. Yeah. Hold yeah. up now. Hold up. What? Yeah. No, seek ye first the, the master's degree. Is that what he says? No, seek ye first that, that, uh, that 4450 that's burned 2019. Brother Odom, can I get it? Yeah. He says, Seek ye what? The first the what? The kingdom. If you lost, it's because you stopped seeking first the kingdom. All right, all right. You stopped, you took a detour on this road called Christianity. All right. And you stopped listening to and looking forward to God, and you started looking to other things. We all, all right. do that. We, we've done it before. And he knocks us back on the path. And Jesus answered, and we're going to end with this. He answers this, because this is 30 minutes, man. I've got to sit down. And we all, all start throwing eggs and stuff up here. Okay, so, so he says... I am the what? The way, the truth, the life. I am the what? The way, the truth, the life. If you want life, you gotta come through. Right, If you want truth, you gotta come in this direction. Because we know the devil's the author of lies, right? So anything else other than the truth is a lie. That's the and who's the author of that? The devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call it. It could be your husband. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so I am the truth, the way, the life. And no other man can come. Y'all know it. Man, I'm preaching to people. Y'all taught me this growing up. Y'all taught me this growing up. And I did here too. And I kept it. I kept it in perspective. And I was able to, to, to find a, a beautiful woman that was Christian and, and understood who God is. I could have easily stepped out and got somebody who was out there that was worthy yeah. and showing yeah. all of this and all of that. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. And then raising two black men yeah. in this country. Yeah. That's a chore. That's a task. Yeah. All right. That's a task. <laughs> but it takes a Christian to keep it in perspective. I can, I can easily lose it, right? I can easily get off banter and, and do some other things, but I got to keep perspective. If you are lost this morning, if you are lost this morning, the opportunity is now. The opportunity is now. Right. The way, the truth, the life. This is Christianity thing. It's not something you have to build and then you go into the house. You can start right now. Right. You can start right now. We have the opportunity. That's a Christian. There's somebody here today. There's somebody here. I'm looking. There's somebody here. There's somebody here that wants the opportunity to redeem and to repent and turn around. It's a 180. You turn around and you get yourself back and you start seeking first. Seeking first. Amen. Because when we put God in second place and third place and fourth place, and he keeps moving back further and further on the bus. Yeah. He keeps moving back further and further on the bus. Because you put in education and family and air money and yeah. find everything else before him. Yeah. Before him, you, you become lost. Yeah. There's somebody who had hey, may not be a Christian. I tell you, that's the best thing I never forget. <clears throat> Brother, Brother Charles Howard, man, I went back there. Brother Drew took me back there, and we went back on this side. Of okay. And Brother Drew said, man, next to getting married, this is the most important thing that you can ever do in your life. Never forgot those words. And I was like, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. yeah. And I hung on to it. And let me tell you, it's hard, man. I let go every now and then, but God will pick me back yeah. up. Yeah. And he'll dust you off and say, boy, look here. Do a little sweeping. Do a little sweeping. 
clean your house up, boy. Clean your house up and then go on with your way. Somebody need to pick the broom up and start swimming. Somebody need to put, get your flashlight. I know we don't have lanterns now and the kerosene, but you got flashlights. If your light's turned off, we got benevolence. Okay, I'm just kidding. But start looking. Start looking. Start looking. Because eventually, if you, if, if you don't get found by God, the devil, he's always looking. Remember, he's a thief. And he's looking to what? Steal, kill, destroy. You think he will stop on kill, but he wants to totally make sure you're, you're done. He wants to take the headshot. He wants to execute you. Make sure you don't get up again. The opportunity is now. The opportunity is now. I know there's somebody here this morning who wants to change their life. Who really wants to rededicate? Oh, who wants to get baptized? The water's ready. Mm -hmm. If it's not, we'll get it ready. We'll make it happen. Yeah. Christianity trumps everything in your life. Amen. Okay? Amen. And I'm going to end with this. I, I really have this feeling, Brother Floyd, mm -hmm. that, that, the, that four angels are on the, on the four corners are okay. going to, to be called. So this world's chaotic. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 It is a mess. It's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. When, when parents act like the kids, yeah. <laughs> and, and when we're yeah, starting, yeah. stuff is going to reverse. So, so time is running out. Time is running out. People, somebody's playing Russian roulette with their life. Yeah. Yeah. You need to stop. You need to think about it. You need to think about it because soon and eventually, he's going to come back. And remember I told you, not everybody's going to go on that trip. Not everybody's going to get to go on that trip. This is the opportunity now as so we stand and sing the song invitation. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the word delight. The This afternoon, we'll be coming from Isaiah chapter 40, where we're talking about being mounted on the wings of eagles, exercising and embracing our extraordinary faith. Exercising and, and, and embracing our extraordinary faith. This is going to be a fantastic, fantastic opportunity to learn more about our faith. On the water way, do I
this afternoon, scripture brother. We coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. The verses are 27 through 31. Again, that's the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. The verses are 27 through 31. And it reads, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and just and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you ever known? Have you ever heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, neither faint nor is weary. His understanding is uncertain. Gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increased strength. Even the youth shall faint, faint, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May the Lord have blessing over the reads and doors of the Holy Divine Word. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer.
it's so easy to complain. Yeah. We get lackadaisical sometimes, and we want to complain about the arthritis, or we want to complain uh, about this other yeah. ailment, or we complain about the bill that we created, or we, we complain about so many things. We complain about the kids that we created. You know, all these things that we complain about. We complain about, but we got to realize, man, God don't work on complaints. He works on blessings. He works on blessings. So he says, why are you complaining, Jacob? Uh, and we know that's the name for Israel, right? God's chosen people. Uh, and then he says, why do you consistently complain about your situations and your circumstances? He's telling us, man, you need to shut up and listen to me for a second. That's strong words, right? Strong words. But God is telling us, be quiet, sit still, and I want you to listen to me. What do you want us to listen to? He said, my way is hidden from the Lord. This is what Israel is saying. My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded. By, uh, by the way of my God. This is the NIV version. So he's saying here, the Israelites is crying out saying, my way is hidden. I'm hidden from the Lord. God doesn't see me. God doesn't see me in my pain and my anguish and in this captivity, Babylonian captivity, which was the most difficult captivity that they ever endured. He's not listening to me. God, listen, listen, listen. Excuses. Excuses. Yeah. God doesn't work on excuses. Again, he works on blessings. So in verse 28, he says this. Do you not know? And, and, and he answers this he asks this question like they don't know. They really do know, right? Do you not know? Because the same God that put them in bondage, the same God that split that Red Sea. Do y'all remember that in the book of Genesis? Man, it, it, the Egyptians were coming, they were coming for them, and then they got to the sea, they were at a dead end. And then God just the waters just opened up and they walked on dry land, and then the enemy was coming and the waters crashed right in on them. They're like, don't you remember what I did for you? No, do they not know? Have you not heard? They heard what's going on. Even today, we, we hear many miracles that God has created even today. And when we woke up this morning, they, don't you know? Have you not heard? Were you able to get up this morning and put your own clothes on by yourself? Right. If you had some assistance, you still had somebody there to support you. Right. Open up the refrigerator, still something there. Gas in the car. You got a job. If you don't have a job, you have retirement. If you don't, you have unemployment. You live in a country that's, man, it's beautiful. This is beautiful. Things God has blessed us with. Right. So he said, Have you not known? Uh, do you not know? And have you not heard? And he says, The Lord. The Lord is what? He's everlasting. He's indestructible. He's outlasting. He's never ending. He's boundless. He's infinite. The God that you serve, man, he never ends. And so beginning and the end, he outlasts any problem that you have. Right. And then he goes on further and he says, The creator of the ends of the earth. Yeah. Now, you, you, and, and, and this is amazing. Again, in the book of Genesis. God was speaking things into fruition. I mean, he said, let there be light, and bam, that was light. Yeah. Then he created, who can create something, and something like us is complicated as a human being out of dirt. Yeah. That's amazing. And he created the heavens and the earth and all these things. He shaped it with his own very, with the sound of his voice. And he says, he will not grow what? Tired or weary. This is the mentality of God. Because have you ever been tired or weary before? Oh, yeah. oh, I know I have. I'm going to go back to school for a second. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be there tomorrow. I'm energized right now because I had a week off, right? Yeah. But before that week, I was tired. And I was weary. And yeah. kids coming in, teachers coming in, parents coming in, and, and all these things that are going on. And, and, and you get tired and you get weary. And you ever heard of that term? Man, you get on my last nerve. <laughs> Hey, you know, I, I think I told one of my kids, boy, you're getting on my last nerve. And you know, you get that look, right? Sometimes you don't have to say anything, you just look at them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get on out of here, right? God doesn't do that. Just think, as much as we get into, if, yeah. God, if we ever got on his nerve, he could just shut us down just yeah. like him. Yeah. But because of his unconditional love and support for us, he continues to give us the opportunity to get yes, right. Because he wants us to be in heaven with him. So, he says this here. He says, uh, he will not grow tired or weary, okay? You won't get fatigued. You won't get fed up, exhausted or worn out. And uh, he says, and his understanding, no one can fathom. Often we think we are so intelligent with books, schools, inventions, investments, yeah, yeah. and so forth. However, God is smarter. He created us. Therefore, he can assist us when we, we are in need. Why do we go through those those that are the creators of chaos. Why do we go to those who are creators of chaos and confusion? Our neighbors, our co-workers, instead of going to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Right. 
And he goes on here and he says, he gives strength to the weary. So he doesn't get tired. He doesn't right, get weary, right. but he gives. Right. <laughs> he doesn't get tired. He doesn't get weary. But yet he gives because he knows we get what? Tired and we right, get weary. Right. So he gives strength. And this word strength, man, I just want to talk to this original version of this word. It means God is able to produce and give power to those that are lesser than him. All right. God is able to produce and give power to those that are lesser than him. First, we must realize that we do serve a God and he will one day come back. All right? And we must understand that we are lesser and he's greater. Right. There's a position that we must play. We, we can never be greater than God. But when we get tired and we get weary, we need to latch on. And remember, our strength comes from him. Right. And he goes on and he says power. This word power means capacity, willpower, stability, potential, competence, hope, opportunity, a chance to win. Yeah. I hate losing. I hate losing. Man, if it's a video game, I hate losing. Yeah. Even when I'm cheering for my team, Tennessee, go! And I hate when they lose, right? Who hate? Who wants to lose? Who wants to see a loser? Even with the team down with the Titans, and when they lose, man, the stadium, there's nobody already there, right? But when we win, people love to see winners. Right, right. People love to see winners. Don't you know you're a winner? All right. Don't you know you're a winner? And you got people cheering for you in the book of Hebrews. Don't, and it talks in chapter 11. You know you got a, a, a chorus of people in the stands saying, Go, Brother Moses and some of these others yes, that are cheering us on and saying, you got to do it, but you got to have faith. See, this is where our faith comes in at. If we stay on our own energies and our own weariness and tiredness, we'll never make it to the finish right, line. Right. There's a finish line that's right there and it's so close. And the only way we can be able to get it is to get the strength from God. So God says this, he gives strength to the weary. Not only that, he increased. Now God is just giving us everything. He, he, we're not, he gives strength. And then he increases. He increases the power of the weak. Okay? And he says, even the youth, even the young people will grow tired and weary, and young men will stumble and fall. Yeah. We talked about that this morning. We see that often, all so many times. But 31 says, but. I like how God puts that conjunction in there. But those who hope in the Lord, and this hope, where is your hope? Are you waiting on him? What's your expectations? Have you ever been let down? God will not let you down. God is demanding that we test his mantle. So ask God, ask God, what do you stand in need of this week? Amen. What do you stand in need of? What, what, what is it that you need? Don't tell me because I can't help you, right? I'll be a good listener, and I don't mind listening, and I'll pray for you, but I can't give you anything. Amen. But God can give you strength. He can give you endurance. He can give you everything you need to conquer anything Satan goes to, throws towards you. Uh, and I love this part, 31. We'll end with this. And it is fair. And I want, I want to hit home with three things. He said, but those we hold, uh, he will renew. He will renew. Now, re, preposition, means again, right? right? He will what? Renew. Some of us need to be renewed. <laughs> we need to be re energized because we, we allow. The, this, the, you know, circumstances yeah, to, right. to, to come in on us. But we need to be renewed. He said he renews our strength. And he, and he gives us three things. Soar, run, and walk. Soar, run, and walk. Right. Fly. Then when you think about flying, think of an eagle. Right? Eagle goes so high. And they're so strong. And they yeah. command the air. But you know, they're, they're high above. Why? Because they can see everything. Right, right. I can see my enemy's next move. I can see what's, what's coming ahead, what's next, right? And then not only that, he says run. Don't you know you're able to compete in this, this race that we're running? Right. This is a competition, but it's not for the ones that's first. It's just the one that, what, endures. That's All you got to do is endure. Make it to the end. It's not about first, second, and third. It's just I got to get across the yes, sir. And then finally, walk. Don't you know your lifestyle and walk goes together? That's what this is talking about. You're able to walk. Walk is synonymous with lifestyle. The race is not to the quickest, right. but to those that endure. Right. Are you tired of running aimlessly? Running in every rich direction, without direction? God will give you direction. So uh, fly, run, walk. Isaiah 40, verse 1 and 2 says this. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed and that her sin has been paid for that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. As Isaiah 41.10 says this, Fear not, for I am with you. 
Yes, sir. Be not dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with righteousness and with the right hand. And whenever God talks about that right hand, that's the good hand, right? Have a great week. Have a great week. Don't let, don't let Satan beat you. You beat him, all right? You got it. You have the tools. You have a God that can trump anything in your life, okay? So let's have a blessed week in the Lord. It's going to be excellent. I'm claiming victory for everyone. I'm claiming victory for everyone. And before we, we do our song invitation, I want to pray. I want to pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, which are in heaven, we're so thankful for this opportunity. Lord, you're so amazing. You're, you're beautiful. You, you crafted this world with just speaking it out, Father. And we're so thankful for being able to serve you. Father, we pray at this time for this, this church, Father, and the leadership here and all the members. Father, there's, there's a movement going on, beautiful movement that's going on behind the scenes, Father. We're asking for a special blessing. Yes, Father, great expect, uh, expectations, Father, here. Father, the light is burning bright, Father, and it's going to burn even brighter. Father, we pray that uh, as we go out through this week, we'll have a fantastic week that we remember who we serve and who's here fighting this battle with us, Father. We're not by ourselves. We're not alone, Father. But we have you with us, Father, every step of the way. We ask that, for, that you order our steps each and every day, each and every second, that we'll be able to be the good husbands and the fathers and the mothers and the daughters and everything that we need to be, Father, that's called out in your word. That's what we want, Father. Father, we pray that we don't get weary in well-doing, that we continue to do uh, your will, Father. We ask to spring in Son's name. Let everyone say amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. May God continue to uh, keep you. There may be somebody here that may need prayer, may need to be baptized. Everything is ready. We're here for you. We want to, uh, it's a blessing. The angels will rejoice. Uh, if you need prayer, we can also lift you up there too. Let's stand as we sing a song here. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See, on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me.
Ready for the fire, ready for the fire, ready for the fire. Well, no more water, fire next time. No more water, fire next time. You know the water kept falling. You know it. You know the water kept falling. Yeah. You know the water kept falling. Nobody believed. No one when he said it. He said it. He said that it's gonna rain, y'all. Nobody believed it. So they didn't. They didn't get in the yard, y'all. Well, you know what? They were left behind. They were left behind. God wouldn't go wait on them no more, no. You know the water can fall in. Well, well, and no more water. Fire next time. No more water. Fire next time. 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 No more water.